Welcome to N5 Electrotechnics, and we'll be taking a look at question two from a previous exam paper. And we'll be looking at the notes related to these questions. Now, an RLC circuit of resonance, here we have a capacitor connected in series with an inductor. And there is a positive charge and a negative charge across the plates which make up the capacitor. The current is flowing in a clockwise direction from positive to negative. Initially, the capacitor is fully charged, and as it starts to discharge, we end up with a large amount of current through the inductor. The process then does the opposite where the capacitor starts to charge again, and the current through the inductor gets less. Now this process repeats itself over and over again. And what we find is that as the capacitor charges and discharges, we end up with an oscillating circuit, and that is our AC circuit as well. Now an RLC circuit at resonance is when the inductive reactance is equal to the capacitive reactance. At resonance, XL is equal to XC. The impedance will be at minimum, the currents at maximum, and we will have unity power factor, which means cos theta is equal to one. Once again, RLC circuit at resonance means XL is equal to XC. Two pi FL is equal to one over two pi FC. To calculate the resonant frequency, it is one over two pi square root LC. Looking at our very first example for question 2.1, and I've drawn the circuit diagram below so you can have a look at the, the values and the way that the, the circuit is drawn up. A resonance circuit consists of a coil of inductance of 430 microhenry and a resistance of 35 ohms. And this combination is in parallel with a variable capacitor. This circuit is then connected in series with a resistor of 8,400 ohms. The supply across the circuit is 80 volts with a frequency of 1,8 megahertz. Now, in question 2.1.1, we need to calculate the impedance of the parallel branch. Now, because the circuit is at resonance, to calculate the impedance across the parallel branch, it'll be L over CR. So therefore, we need to first determine the value of the capacitor. Now, in order to do this, remember our circuit is at resonance, XC is equal to XL. We do have the value of the inductor, two times pi times F times L. Therefore, two times pi, the frequency of 1,8 megahertz or times 10 to the power of six. The inductor is 430 microhenry, therefore it's 430 times 10 to the minus six. Therefore, the capacitive reactance is 4,863,185 ohms. Right, now we can go ahead and determine the value of the capacitor. And the formula we can use is 1 over 2 pi F XC. So it's 1 over 2 times pi, the frequency of 1,8 megahertz. And the value of the capacitive reactance, which is the same as the inductive reactance, of 4,863,185. Therefore, the value of the capacitor is 18,181 picofarad. Now we can determine the value of the impedance across the parallel branch. The value of the inductor, 430 microhenry, over the value of the capacitor, which is 18,181 picofarad, or we could say times 10 to the minus 12. And the value of the resistance is 35 ohms. Therefore, the impedance across the parallel branch is 675,745 kilo ohms. Now, looking at the next topic before we move on to uh, the second part of question two is complex numbers. Now, J is our imaginary number. Now, J squared will give us minus one. Now, normally when you square something, you end up with a positive sign. But in this case, because we've got minus one, it is known as an imaginary number. Now, if we take any real number and multiply it by J, we get an imaginary number. Yeah, we have a real number added with an imaginary number and is therefore referred to as complex numbers. This is the real part of the complex number. 
and this is the imaginary part. And this only becomes a representation of a complex number. Yeah, I've drawn a horizontal curve and a vertical curve. Y represents the imaginary and X represents the real line. Let's plot this complex number on two planes, assuming both A and B are positive. Now, if we draw a line to the intersection between A and B, this angle will represent theta and this line will represent R. Therefore, the plot between B and A is represented by the letter R. We now therefore have a complex number represented in polar form. Now we can convert rectangular to polar and we can convert polar to rectangular or depending on what calculation we're doing. This is our rectangular form and this is our polar form. Now here we have a positive curve and a negative curve. The y axis is our imaginary axis and the x axis is our real axis. Now when doing our calculations for RLC circuits, R is the positive value on the real axis and our inductive reactance is on the imaginary axis and is usually represented by a positive sign. Our capacitive reactance is usually represented by a negative sign and that also falls on the imaginary axis. We add and subtract in rectangular form when doing our calculations and we multiply and divide in polar form when doing our calculations. Now for this experiment, I have my Cassio up on the screen just to quickly show you how I would go about converting rectangular to polar. And you'd have to practice on your own calculator when doing the next example. Now, first of all, we set the, the calculator up to complex. Uh, we choose the number two for complex. Uh, we say open brackets, five plus four I, which represents the imaginary number, close brackets. Shift two to give us the complex value. Three in order to convert it to polar form, which will give us equal sign. Then we hit this little SD button and that will give us the value in polar form. Right, you'd have to practice on your own calculator, get familiar with it. And um, we're not gonna go through the step-by-step -step when doing the next example. It's gonna take too much time. So you'd have to practice on your own calculator and see if you can convert rectangular to polar and polar to rectangular. Right, the second part of question two, an impedance Z1 of five plus J4 ohms is connected in parallel with an unknown impedance Z2. This circuit is then connected in series with another impedance called Z3, comprising a resistance of two ohms in series with a capacitive reactance of four ohms. The complete circuit is then connected to a 100 volt 50 hertz supply and the total current flowing through the circuit is 24,149 amperes at a power factor of 0,724 leading. Now the negative sign tells us that uh, that branch is a capacitive reactance. The positive sign tells us that that branch is a inductive reactance. And then we have Z2, which is unknown at this point in time. Right, so to determine the current flowing throughout the circuit, now we're gonna first convert um, our rectangular form into polar form, so therefore we can have both options depending on the calculation. So to convert Z1 into polar form, we end up with 6,403 at an angle of 38,66 ohms. When converting rectangular form to polar form for Z3, we end up with 4,472 at an angle of minus 63,43. Now let's first calculate the volt drop across the series branch, which is Z3. And we can say the total current multiply by Z3. But remember, when we multiply, we multiply in polar form. So to work out the polar form for the current, the current is 24,149 amps. To calculate the angle, we say cos theta is equal to 0 0.724. If we take cos across, it becomes cos to the minus one. Therefore, the angle is 43,61 degrees. Now, when multiplying, we multiply in polar form. If we substitute the values, the current is 24,149 at an angle of 
comma six one, multiply by Z three in polar form, which is four comma four seven two at an angle of minus sixty three comma four three. We multiply the current by the impedance or the real number, and then we add forty three comma six one degrees plus minus sixty three comma four three. Therefore, in polar form, the volt drop across Z3 is 107,994 at an angle of minus 19,816. Now, just to make some space, I'm going to take that answer across, and we will write it there by our circuit diagram. Okay, the next step is to calculate the voltage across the parallel branch. Now, because we're going to be working with rectangular form, we are able to subtract however just remember this is an ac circuit so the only reason why we're subtracting is because we're using complex numbers now the total voltage will be 100 plus j0 minus the volt drop across z3 which is 101,599 minus j36,61 in rectangular form Right, so to just get the polar value of that for the volt drop across the parallel branch, it is 36,645 volts at an angle of 92,51 degrees. Now that we've got the voltage across the parallel branch, we, we can now calculate what the current is flowing through Z1. Now remember, when dividing and multiplying, we will divide and multiply in polar form. So the volt drop across the parallel branch is 36,645 at an angle of 92,5. Z1 in polar form is 6,403 at an angle of 38,66. Now we'll divide the values and we will subtract the angles. Therefore in polar form, I1 flowing through the branch called Z1 will be 5,723 amps at an angle of 53,84. Now that we've got I1, we can go ahead and calculate I2. Therefore, the total current minus the current through Z1 will give us the current through I2. Once again, when we subtract and add, we have to do it in rectangular form. So the total current in rectangular form will be 17, 484 plus J 16,657 minus the value of the current through I1. Okay, now in order to get the answer in polar form, you're gonna have to use your calculator once again. So in polar form, the current through the Z2 branch will be 18,557 amps at an angle of 40,51 degrees. Thanks very much for watching this video. Don't forget to get familiar with your calculator. Make sure you can get those calculations. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share these videos. Thank you.